Hi in the morning. Thank you for staying with us. Remember, we you can communicate with us on our social media handles at Y254 across all social media platforms using the hashtag WCW or Y in the morning. If you like, you can get me at Stephanie Ayeta across all social media platforms. We have now come to the second conversation of the day and we are talking about reproductive health, especially matters fertility. And I am joined by experts. We have a reproductive health nurses uh, from my right please introduce yourself hello good morning mm -hmm. my name is Alice Agutu uh -huh. I'm a nurse by profession uh, today we are going to talk about reproductive health nurse because as part of my expertise I'm also a reproductive health nurse I deal with fertility all right uh, to my father's right okay my name is Lilian Avula and I'm also a reproductive health nurse. So we are here today to talk about reproductive health, mm -hmm. both for men and women. So, Karibu Sam. Okay, let's start with you. Uh, you know, we can say reproductive health, but maybe someone doesn't understand what it is. So tell us what is reproductive health? Reproductive health basically is what uh, entails among females and males. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, situation where we want to know if uh, you can be able to to be able to be fertile if you're fertile if you're healthy enough so that we help you to go through this phase so you find um, reproductive health affects both male and female so we are here to expound on that because it's actually quite wide mm -hmm. and it involves a lot of uh, things here and there so we are here to at least make some clarification of the same mm -hmm. because we know in our nation and also worldwide mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are affected by the same so we are here to give actually to give some more insight mm -hmm. about the same. creating the awareness and yes awareness. yes okay so what is the uh, alice what is the significance of reproductive health uh, you know the knowledge what should we know about reproductive health okay i think every woman would want to bear a child someday mm -hmm. and that's why you should know about your reproductive health because as we mature from girls to puberty to being women we need to plan on how we can make these babies so we are here to talk normally about age and fertility mm -hmm. so we are going to take you through from the time you were born as a woman mm -hmm. when you got to puberty Mm -hmm. When you become now in the reproductive age, when you're supposed now to give birth, and when now you're supposed to retire, maybe menopause and not take care of your children. Okay. So we are going to dwell on that bracket mm -hmm. in both women and men and too. Both. All right. So um, you can tell us, you know, uh, what are some of the measures first before we get into it that we can take as a country to improve, you know, our reproductive health standards. As a country, what I can suggest is we start educating people as early as when they're in their puberty age, both the male and female. Mm -hmm. We educate and enlighten them and tell them like, um, once you get to that phase of now you need to start reproducing, mm -hmm. what are the measures that you can take to help um, uh, make the, our bodies prepared yeah. and what can we do to just Keep ourselves in that mood. Keep ourselves in that space of like, yeah, we are ready, and mm -hmm. everything at least will go smoothly. So I guess as a country, is all about education, mm -hmm. telling people as early as they can, and also we just try to, you know, pass a message, tell a friend to tell a friend, like, yes, okay. this thing can start early, and we can, yeah, we can do this as a country. Mm -hmm. So now tell us, Alice, what is fertility? Because you know, it's easy to say this this person is infertile. This one. So what exactly is fertility? Is it not being able to give birth completely or is it having difficulties in giving birth? birth? Tell us about it. Okay, everyone is born fertile, one. Mm -hmm. We are born with all our reproductive system intact. But as time goes by, as we mature, our bodies adapt to changes environmental changes mostly mm -hmm. and also our personal life so you might find with time we can we can have problems just like a normal human being you can have malaria today mm -hmm. tomorrow you can have tuberculosis the same way also infertility can 
fit in your body so once 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 it comes you'll 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 realize maybe at your puberty maybe you didn't get your you still you didn't start your menstrual cycle as all the other girls started maybe all the other girls started when they were in st standard eight mm -hmm. you you didn't start Mm -hmm. You are in form three, you are seeing nothing, maybe your breasts are not growing, your hips are not broadening, and you are not getting the signs of puberty. When you're at that point, you can start considering maybe there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So, like, those are just the few cases. But as when we talk, when, when, when we get into detail, into fertility, into, into, into infertility, mm -hmm. it's when maybe you're you're between the between the age of 25 to 30 you should comfortably get a baby 25 and, it, and 30. 25 to 30 you should comfortably get a baby when you want mm -hmm. between 30 to 35 you can try for an year if it doesn't come within an year you can consider seeing a gyna or a fertility specialist when you're between age 35 to 40 mm -hmm. and you try for six months and you're not getting results i think by then you can start and question questioning yourself can i see a doctor then when you are, you are from the age 40 and above because that's that's where we are we are moving towards menopause mm -hmm. when you want to get a baby i think the first thing you should do is consult a doctor first so that you start like on the on the right path mm -hmm. so uh my what i'm saying is infertility can get you between in between these ages and when you see any sign and sign and symptoms mm -hmm. just try and consider seeing an infertility specialist okay yeah so you have spoken about fertility mostly in women yes, yes. So, uh lillian tell us about infertility or fertility in men um, infertility in men varies a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in our African society, mm -hmm. um, we always think like, when you talk about infertility, we always think about the woman. Exactly. We always forget like, for you to also get pregnant, you also this need this male. The man Yeah, has the an man contributes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you see like, when, when, when you want to get pregnant, you need an X or X chromosome yeah. or an X and Y chromosome for mm -hmm. you to get either a boy or a girl. Yeah. So that means this man is very vital in the reproductive process. Yeah. So we have men who actually ha have different problems and they really, um, they are really cushioned down in their, in their cocoon, fearing to come and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because we find um, some can be maybe genetically, maybe they're born, uh, maybe without like the testes. You know the testes? So, in, uh, so now you're saying someone can be infertile from birth. Yeah, we have some who can be infertile from birth in the sense of maybe they have a birth defect, you know. Okay. If maybe, like let's say the man, mm -hmm. um, maybe the testes did not descend at okay. birth. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the man was born without. Remember, this is something that you cannot control. So if you're born without, there's nothing you can do? There's nothing much you can do. All right. Yeah, but you find like even through as the man grows, eh, you know, Men, as, as, as they're born, they are, we all are fertile from birth, yeah? But you find like maybe the environmental factors can come in and maybe now they can push you to, mm -hmm. towards maybe now the situation of being infertile. Say for example, um, if you're growing up and maybe for men, maybe you, you've ever heard of something called mumps, yeah? Mm -hmm. If men have mumps, especially during the puberty stage... Explain what mumps is for those that don't know. Okay, mumps mostly is a childhood infection. It's mm -hmm. mostly a childhood infection and it's a viral infection. And once it gets to your bodies, there are some changes it can occur. Okay? Right. So mostly, especially when you're a child, it doesn't really have that much of an impact than when you're an adult. So you find when you have um, this... Um, this uh, viral infection, it can cause also an infection in the body, like towards the reproductive mm -hmm. uh, place. Definitely. So once it causes an infection, it can maybe cause maybe some blockages or something. So you see if it causes blockages in a man, like maybe let's say from the, where the sperms are supposed to travel all through, you see now the sperms are not able to travel from the testes mm. towards out when the man ejaculates. Yeah. So you find like um, that can cause a problem. That's why we say maybe infections, even sexually uh, transmitted, transmitted infections can also cause problems in men. Mm -hmm. Also, you find in males, um, we normally tell them to have nice, comfortable briefs. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
you mm. see like when 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 they put on like tight um, underwear it can cause like you know uh, some heat right. you know they need a lot of uh, air aeration mm. that's why we recommend like for them to have boxers things like that and also um, lifestyle you know um, you find like in our generation right now we have so many men who are indulging in maybe alcoholism mm -hmm. we have like maybe the chewing of mira the cut and you see these things in the long run they normally come back and affect the system so mm -hmm. you find for men we normally tell them like sometimes it's a lifestyle thing sometimes it may be also exposure to radiation things like that that's why it's not recommended for either female and male to expose themselves maybe to x-rays mm -hmm. um, to to go maybe you see in factories maybe where there's a lot of radiation we always tell you to always protect themselves right. yeah so now and is age a factor in men you know as Ali said for women you get to a certain age around that 540 especially yeah. it becomes a challenge but for men is it a factor because you know we have seen men <laughs> 80s yeah. still giving back for men age is re doesn't really affect that much that's mm -hmm. why you may find even a 60 year old man impregnating a young girl yeah yeah but what mostly affects men would be their lifestyle Mm -hmm. or maybe a chronic disease or um, yeah maybe the, the lifestyle yeah things like that right. so for men age is really not a factor but still we normally encourage like if you can be able to to reproduce at an early age it will give you a more comfortable space to take care of your child uh, by the time you also get to that to that stage all right yeah. Alice back to you so now you've mentioned you know mostly age as a factor for women the different levels at which one should give birth and when one should see a gyna or an infert infertility expert. So now what are some of the causes of infertility in women apart from age? Okay, apart from age, we can talk about there are some women who have tubal blockage. You know, fertilization normally happens on the tubes. When mm -hmm. your tube is blocked, there's no way the egg can reach the sperm, or mm -hmm. the sperm can reach the egg. Just that's one cause. Another one is hormonal imbalance. Hormonal imbalance when your hormones are not balanced. Because hom hom hormones are the ones that passes message to the mm -hmm. our system in the, in the body. So like, when one hormone is not active, there's no way it can pass the message to the hormone maybe in the ovary to produce a, an egg. Mm -hmm. So that's another cause. And that, just to ho hold on on that a bit, so hormonal imbalance, I think many people experience this even at an early age. Is it something that one can treat and then it gets back to track? Actually, the good thing about infertility, we have modern medicine. Everything is treatable right now. Okay. And hormonal imbalance is just one of the mere Mm -hmm. Mia, Mia causes that you can treat through medication and you're good. Maybe for medication just for two months and mm -hmm. you're good to go. Things like tubal blockage, you can always go for a laparoscopy or you can use medication that can unblock your tubes. Another cause is when you have maybe ovarian cysts, cysts on your, in your ovary that will prevent your eggs from maturing so mm -hmm. that they can be fertilized. So what are the, oh, so the cysts are... Preventing the ovaries from maturing. Yes, from maturing so that they can be good quality eggs. Actually, cysts reduce your quality. So cysts and fibroids, it's something you can also do surgery and do away with it so that you go back to your normal state of fertility. Okay. Just, just to you know, dwell on cysts and fibroids because I've had so many cases of this. Mm. So is it safe for one to go for surgery before before getting, uh, trying to conceive again, or can one try to conceive before getting uh, them, them off? Is Actually, it a risk factor? yeah, cyst and fibroids is definitely a risk factor because mm -hmm. one, it might prevent you from getting pregnant. And maybe if you get pregnant, something like fibroid can cause a miscarriage because now you know the fibroid and the baby, they are fighting for space. Mm -hmm. So whoever wins, if the fibroids, pushes the baby, it will 
really it will come out and it will cause a miscarriage for cysts you might be feeling some pains during your ovulation and during your menstrual cycle mm -hmm. so such discomforts can make you wonder what is going on in my system so you can go for an ultrasound when the doctor finds you have a cyst or he can give you medication to reduce it or if the cyst can is causing more problem he can decide to send you for surgery mm -hmm. and when you when, when when it's removed you're good to go it will have solved two problems the pains and also it will have increased your fertility chances okay talk about the fibroids because you've said they're competing and this, are these unwanted weeds comparing them to plants you know <laughs> and it's like unwanted weeds in the womb competing and how are they how are they like you know for someone who doesn't know about them Okay, a fibroid is an abnormal mass in the uterus. It can go grow inside the uterus or outside the uterus, but it's an abnormal and unwanted mass in your reproductive system. So mm -hmm. normally it's a malignant. Normally they are always malignant because even in a farm, if you don't remove the weed, it will grow. So in our in our edges you can just notice it maybe when you have heavy menstrual cycles mm -hmm. that can indicate maybe you have a fibroid or you just feel some sort of pain during your menstrual cycle that can indicate you have a fibroid and also in the old age mm -hmm. when maybe you feel your your body is a bit heavy your tummy is enlarging you might consider removing that fibroid even if you have already given birth in future actually fibroids normally don't cause you to be infertile but once they're there they can cause many problems like to you miscarriage. yes miscarriage and also your system when you bleed too much your mm -hmm. hb will go low and you might even become sick maybe mm -hmm. anemia so fibroid is something that we should all consider checking our system if we have or if we are not or if we are trying to get a baby or if you're not trying to get a baby it's something that should be removed once you detect it okay yeah so back to you uh, Lillian tell us about the checkups how you know how often should we go for the checkups and why are they necessary like she said we should go to check if we have fibroids if you're sus suspecting it and you know maybe not a tummy in a group but you, you don't understand if any food maybe it's a fibroid there so what is the importance of going for the checkups um first of all um it is usually recommended at least every year you do a well woman check even for the males okay mm -hmm. because in the life that we're living in we're experiencing a lot of changes maybe because of diet because you know we're having a lot of gmos in our market and everything mm -hmm. so it is recommended at least every year you can do um, a well woman check yeah. uh, and also mostly especially like married couples and you've had like she's given us a timeline of some ages how mm -hmm. yeah so if you're married and probably you've been trying for for getting yeah. pregnant for a while and nothing is forthcoming it is very important and advisable for you to to seek medical advice like you can go to your nearest uh, maybe uh, a gynae who can do the recommended tests Mm -hmm. like to find out maybe what is the problem you, as you've heard we have hormonal uh, some people have hormonal changes some have maybe infections some maybe it may be the tubal so you need to check the uterus we have some scans you need to do mm -hmm. so best is if you've been married for a while and you're not nothing is forthcoming it's best for you to seek medical advice mm -hmm. um, plus also if just you are not yet married and um, you'd like to just know how you're faring, best is every year just do a medical checkup. So, um, you know when you go for the checkup, because I know of a story of someone uh, close to me, who went for a checkup and was told you need to get pregnant this year. So what are some, you know, some of the factors that would cause one to be told that and why is it necessary to follow that? Maybe if, because maybe you don't have anyone you're not <laughs> ready, but you just yeah. wanted to go and check. I think a doctor would probably tell you that so that um, you can actually get in the mood to want to, to, to get pregnant because you know time is for us ladies time is a factor mm -hmm. so the more you age the more everything will now start working against you mm -hmm. so the earlier you start the better so recommended is um, whenever you you get into that space like yeah I've been told by the doctor I need to get pregnant right now. Mm -hmm. 
you need to find out like why was this doctor referring me to do this right now is it because something bad will happen to my body is it mm. my hormones will play against me things like that but normally doctors will not give you like a strict timeline like now 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 because if it's now 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 i mean you'd have already gotten pregnant yeah? <laughs> you know, yeah yeah so the thing is first of all you need to rule out what what is actually causing you not to get pregnant at that time and what can actually be done like she said if it is hormonal we have medication to actually help us with that mm. if it is fibroids you do away with that if it is a cyst you see now that one is removed and you will go back to a situation where you are able to get pregnant so basically it is just eliminating the cause of the infertility mm. and then finding a solution like what would be the best treatment for me to help me get pregnant Okay. Yeah. So back to you, Alice. Maybe you can share to us some of the measures for people struggling with infertility. What are some of the options given to them? Because I know of, um, I've forgotten the name really, <laughs> but mm -hmm. somehow you, you, you store your, you can store your eggs or your sperms, something like that. So tell us some of the options. Yeah, actually, we can start with the one you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's a modern technique where you're able to freeze your eggs. Maybe right now, if you're 30 and you're not ready to get pregnant, you can go to a specialist. They take out your eggs, they freeze them. Because as we, as we have said in this topic, age and infertility, as you grow older, mm -hmm. your, your infertility goes down a bit. So as while well, well you're still young, you can be able to remove these eggs and freeze them and it will, the eggs will help you. Even when you're at 40 and you try to get pregnant, then you're not able to get pregnant. We can do a procedure called IVF and implant the eggs you had freezed mm -hmm. into your uterus and successfully you become pregnant. Just, just one of the methods you can use. Another method you can use, you can always boost your system. Mm -hmm. by using supplements mm -hmm. as a woman we we all need to be on supplements well woman well women supplements supplements such as folic acid vitamin c which is an antidetoxant mm -hmm. there is also omega omega will give your eggs strength even when you're 38 or 39 and you want to get pregnant you will get pregnant we also have a hormonal imbalance drug called DHA. It will maintain your hormones. Mm -hmm. And also another drug called CQ10. It will also engage your chromosomes in your eggs so that they become active. Mm -hmm. Even at the age of 40, mm -hmm. you're able to conceive with your normal eggs. We should also look at the lifestyle. We should take healthy foods such as ve vegetables, healthy fats such as avocado. Mm -hmm. We avoid processed foods, meat products, because meat, meat will just make you be obese. Because here we're also looking at your BMI. Mm -hmm. Once your eggs are too fatty, definitely when you're too fatty, your eggs are a bit slow. Oh, okay. Even if in, in, <laughs> in your normal <laughs> malformation, uh -huh. if you're a bit fat or obese, you can be a bit slower on things. So that's why, that's how mm -hmm. our, our, also our bodies work. So if you want to maintain a, if you can maintain a good BMI, mm -hmm. you can be active, you can release some stress through yoga, acupuncture, mm -hmm. you'll be able to maintain your fertility through these years. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about medication, preservation, and lifestyle change. You should also avoid alcohol, smoking, and drugs. Those are things that will have, will affect your fertility also, a woman, and also a man. Okay. So maybe you can take us through, you know, you've mentioned the processes, but someone may be... Uh, one chico, you know, common money, she might not be able to afford IVF because I know it's a very expensive process. So are there other options for, for people like this that they can afford because they want to get a baby but they're having difficulties? Yeah, that. yeah. If you if you are if you are you're on the timeline that I've said and you're seeing you're not getting a baby, what mm -hmm. you should consider is just the baseline checks that I've said. Healthy eating, lifestyle change elimination of drugs and also using supplements eventually with time you'll get pregnant that's why we are seeing a lot of women getting pregnant it's just adapting to a normal life life change you avoid the things that can make you mm. become infertile right. such as drugs things things like those so 
what, what I'm saying, those are, that's one of the cheapest way. Just avoid things that can mm -hmm. get you infertile. But when we go, when you go to a gyna, you can consider doing a surgery if your tubes are blocked or if you have cysts or fib fibroids. You can consider doing a surgery. Then you go back to your marriage. You will get pregnant. And if it doesn't happen after trying the lifestyle change, the medication, or maybe surgeries where it's applicable, you can always visit an, a, a fertility specialist. Fertility specialists are, are all over Nairobi. Right now we, we are blessed we have a lot of fertility clinics in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. You can walk in there and you can, you can consult with a doctor mm -hmm. and he can, he, can, he can bring an intervention before we go to IVF, which is a bit expensive, you can be an intervention such as monitoring. Maybe you can give you injection. Then he tell you on a certain date, make sure you you'll be ovulating, do an ovulation test, mm. then go and be active and be and be sexually active with your husband. On mm. maybe maybe from day ten to day fourteen, you can get pregnant. Also on maybe day ten to fourteen, he can he can do an IUI. IUI it means inserting sperms directly to the uterus. Mm -hmm. That is affordable, around thirty to forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So he can tell you on a certain date you'll be ovulating. I've done tests. Then come to the clinic. I'll insert sperms into your uterus, and we'll be able to track the the egg that will be ovulating at that time you can also get pregnant through that and if the other options are not working it is when your doctor will tell you maybe we need to do an IVF mm -hmm. because as we are trying all this time is also moving mm -hmm. maybe you started trying when you are 33 and now when the doctor is telling you know we need to do an IVF it's maybe when you're 37 and he's seeing you're going to reach the mark of 40. Okay. And at 40, maybe he might not be, ha be able to help you effectively. Mm -hmm. So the doctor might want to introduce IVF to you. Mm -hmm. IVF is in vitro fertilization. is a procedure now when we'll do everything in the lab. You've heard people say test your babies, but it's not normally yeah. test your babies. <laughs> Please explain that because it's being misunderstood. It's being misunderstood because... Mm -hmm. When the, they, they think the baby is developing in a, in a test tube, but mm -hmm. this, this embryo is only out of your body, f body for maximum of five days. Mm -hmm. So the doctor will remove the egg from your ovary mm -hmm. and he will request your husband to give out a the semen sperm. sample. Mm -hmm. Then he will fertilize the egg and the sperm mm -hmm. in a laboratory and watch over it as it matures. The same way, the, this, this, this egg and sperm will fertilize in your body and mature and attach to the uterus. So the doctor will watch it for maybe one day, mm -hmm. two day, day three. Mm -hmm. Normally they do transfers on day three when the embryo is on the third day. Okay. But if he might want to continue watching it, I've told you he can only watch it for a maximum of five, five days. days. So you can ev either be done transfer on either day three or day five. Mm -hmm. So on day five, the eggs that you had removed and the sample that your husband had given the sperm, mm -hmm. they are joined together, they become an embryo. On day five, they become blastocysts. We return the babies back to your uterus. Okay, and the babies are normal. The babies are normal because yeah. when we say watching them, the doctor is watching them through a microscope. Okay. An embryologist does this work very well. So he will be able to tell you this one is growing, this one is not growing. This one might come out twins, this one is strong, ah. this is grade one, grade two. Mm -hmm. Because definitely when he removes it, he doesn't remove one egg. We remove like 10, 10 okay. to 15 eggs. So he will take the best and implant in your uterus. Once he implants in your uterus, mm -hmm. If the procedure is successful after two weeks, you'll test for a pregnancy test and you'll turn out to be pregnant. So it's very effective. It's the most effective method. Yes, it's the last option and the most effective one okay. to treat infertility. Okay, Lillian, yeah. back to you. So w how do you solve the problem of men with low sperm count? Because this is also common. <clears throat> for low sperm count in men, mm -hmm. first we need to find out what is causing this low sperm count in men. Mm -hmm. Because if it is environmental, that is lifestyle, you know, you mm -hmm. need to eliminate. If it's taking alcohol, then you need to actually stop. If it's um, drugs, you actually need to stop. Because you see, if that, if that is what now is affecting and you really want to try out then you eliminate that. Another thing would be if if the low sperm count is being caused maybe by a tumor or blockage. Remember um, 
the prostate gland is the most important gland in men. Mm -hmm. So if there's a problem with that also, mm -hmm. we need to 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 find out if it's a tumor then it needs to be eradicated, removed, you know, mm -hmm. to so that this man can go back to optimal um, sperm production. If um, if it's genetic, then you need to know like something genetic really we do not have like a solution, a solution at the moment. You know, the good thing with medicine, mm -hmm. it's ever changing every day. So someone, someone, even me, we can start maybe researching oh, on yeah. that, yeah? <laughs> so yeah. that we can see what would actually be the effective method to actually help if it's genetic. But yeah, basically so, it will be. So for now, if a man maybe has, you know, low sperm count as a genetic problem, that can't really be solved. For genetic, really, that can be solved. But mm. if maybe it's environmental factors and everything, you eliminate that, then remember, we also have medication to help boost this. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if that you've seen the doctor, the doctor has done something called a semen analysis, because you see for a sperm, we look at three factors. Mm -hmm. We look at the count, then we look at the morphology, which is the structure of the sperm. You know, the sperm needs to have a nice oval a head and a, yeah, tail. and a tail. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. and a tail. And also we look at motility. The tail now is now what actually propels the, the sperm towards the egg to fertilize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you consider all these factors, even when the doctor wants to, to, to give you maybe an advice, you look at, he will consider the the semen analysis, then recommend maybe a drug that would actually help that. So men should not um, um, beat themselves up in the sense mm -hmm. of like, oh, I have low sperm count. Let's find out what is the cause of the low sperm count. And as much as the count is low, remember, if you want to try out naturally, then mm -hmm. you probably need to boost with diet, exercise. If you're obese, you need to lose weight. If it's um, alcohol, you need to do away with that. Smoking, you know, mm -hmm. as much as it is hard. But if you really want children, there are some things you can actually sacrifice for. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. Okay. Still on matters, men. I know there's a lot of. Uh, you know, guys saying you, I'll, I want to be a sperm donor. So is it a thing that it's going on that I can go and donate my sperm and I'm given a certain amount and then I sign something that I will be incognito for life, you know? <laughs> is it a thing? Yeah, right now mm -hmm. it is a thing because let's say uh, I am married and my husband is the one who maybe genetically does not have any um, sperm in the semen. Remember, mm -hmm. semen is just a fluid to help carry the sperm from the testes to out. Okay, yeah. so, so you might find you might have semen, but there's nothing in it. So without sperm, so without you can sperm, do nothing. there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. So you find we really want to have this baby, mm -hmm. but my husband is not able to. Mm -hmm. So you can get a sperm donor, whether known, known meaning, let's say. Um, a friend, a brother decides to donate. Mm -hmm. So you see that is an agreement between us. But now if now we've gone, you see now for, for a case like that, definitely you need to do IVF. Because mm -hmm. I cannot go, maybe I'm okay and my husband is not okay, I cannot go to, to sleep with someone else so that I get pregnant. Oh, yes. So mm -hmm. I would get someone maybe in, uh, anonymous from the fertility clinic. So with the fertility clinic, they will tell me like maybe we have different sperm donors. We have this. I can say I can describe the characteristics that I want. Oh, yeah. So you can you can get like a tall, dark, and handsome. Tall, dark, and yeah. handsome. <laughs> you, <get laughs> you can get that. Okay. Yeah, because we have people who actually donate. Mm -hmm. Now and yes, the hospital would actually give them um, something for for that but to me i would not know who the sperm donor because i wanted to remain anonymous mm. for the sake of my peace you know okay. i've gone to seek help but now i wanted to remain anonymous this is someone who has just helped me mm. so with that definitely this man needs to give a consent in the hospital of the fertility clinic needs to write down a consent to release any parental rights because that is very important so that this person, even mm. if we meet in the streets and they're like, eh, this baby uh -huh. looks like me, <laughs> does not have a right over my child because their donor uh, signed a consent to remain anonymous mm -hmm. and just giving um, the sample there. And the hospital is the one maybe to, to, to agree with maybe if to get something or mm. not. Okay. Yeah. Alice, is this the same with women? Can women donate eggs? 
Yeah, actually, women can donate eggs very well because we have these girls between 25 to 30. They have good quality of eggs. And we have a woman from 45 is unable to get pregnant because the quality of egg is low. Mm -hmm. So we we are really creating awareness. There's a way we can help this other woman that's re that really wants a baby, but she can't get a baby because mm -hmm. of her age. Or maybe she did surgery and the ovary ovaries were removed. You know, mm -hmm. that's no, not her fault. Yeah. So we have these young girls who are willing to donate their mm -hmm. eggs so that they can help someone else become a mother. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's when you go to a fertility clinic. If the fertility specialist tells you your ovarian reserve is low we might not be able to get good quality eggs for mm. you he might recommend a donor okay. so when we choose a donor we choose a young donor so that it can increase also your chances so you can say maybe maybe i'm low i can say i want a low girl mm. i will definitely get a low girl because it's all about passion this girl is helping someone who cannot get pregnant because this young girl you're 25 you're born with a lot of eggs millions mm -hmm. and hundreds of thousands of eggs you can help someone get be a parent okay because that's the end goal mm -hmm. we all all we all as women we want to be parents yeah. so once you carry the baby and the sperm is from your husband so the child is still yours it's from your family mm -hmm. this is your is. husband's child is the child is also yours because and you carried this child you it carry was this and child the blood flow is from you the care the feelings the mm -hmm. emotions this baby turns out to be yours and nobody can really know that you use a donor egg mm -hmm. actually whatever you signed in the hospital it's confidential it's anonymous and you mm -hmm. go on with your life and lastly, uh, maybe you can mention briefly about surrogacy. You know, this is also another option. Do we do it in Kenya? Okay, surrogacy, surrogacy, the laws are not passed in Kenya, but we do it through a method called adoption. Mm -hmm. So you can have someone carry, carry the pregnancy for you, and once it's delivered, once the baby is delivered through the adoption laws, you can be able to have this child as your own. And the moment one can can decide to opt for, for a surrogacy. Maybe you had surgery and your uterus was removed. Mm -hmm. Or maybe from your childhood you've never had a uterus. There are people who are born, born without a uterus. Mm -hmm. And maybe when you see things like fibroids, when fibroids are too much in your uterus, your doctor might decide just to do away with the uterus because mm -hmm. Removing the fibroids uh, might, might cost more harm to your uterus. And we also have diseases like tuberculosis of the uterus. When you have mm -hmm. that, you might also be not be able to carry your own child. So that's when you, you get into an agreement with another person to carry the pregnancy for you mm -hmm. up to term. Now these people are lending their uterus. And mm -hmm. definitely a surrogate is compensated after that. Mm -hmm. But after delivery, now through the laws in Kenya, you can be able to have your child through the process of adoption. adoption. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much, ladies, for sharing, you know, such amazing insights on fertility and reproductive health. So tell us how uh, someone can reach you in case they want uh, some consultation or anything and remind, that, and remind them what you do. Okay. Uh, like I began telling you, my name is Lillian and I'm a fertility healthcare expert. So don't be shy, don't beat yourself up and also reduce stigmatization because as we've seen, as much as you have a problem, there is a solution and it all mm. starts by you going for a consultation and get an advice from a healthcare expert on how well you can actually go about the problem. So you can reach us out on... Um, we have a Facebook page, Lotus Fertility Agencies. You can also reach us on a number 0791-826-865. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also we have an Instagram page, Lotus mm -hmm. Fertility. Get to us, reach us out. Let us help you and let us reduce this stigma because as we've seen, we can create smiles to different homes, different mm. families, and yes, we can do this together. I cannot do we it can alone. We can do this together. Okay, yes. tell us, Alice, what is your final word? Tell us where we can get you. Okay, we are actually creating awareness. Don't mm. sit at home. If you want to bear a child, come out, 
reach out to us, we'll be able to take you to various specialists in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We have Fertility Point, we have Medi Hill, we have Dr. Sarita. They're all fertility specialists. And if you want to reach us, you can reach us through 0791. 826-865 or you can go to our Facebook page Lotus Fertility Agency you can get our contact there we can chat through WhatsApp and be sure you will bear a child because our slogan is from life to life from life to life from yes. life, from to, life, life to, life. to life wonderful wonderful <laughs> thank you <laughs> ladies again for coming on board we'd love to have you again and again Oh, okay, thank you so much. So, uh, thank you. That has been uh, Lillian and Alice from, again? Lotus Fertility, Fertility Agency. From Lotus Fertility uh, Agency, talking to us about reproductive health, uh, specifically matter fertility. They say from life to life. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Thank you for staying with us all the way till 10 a.m. Join us again tomorrow, same time, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. From the team, we, we, we thank you so much and we wish you a great day ahead. My name is Stefania Yata. The hashtag is why in the morning at Y254.